Hello and welcome to the C Squared Podcast. This is Curtis Dewar and Corey Westbrook. We are have a very special guest today in the form of Mr. Blasco, who is the Swiss Army Knife of Metal. He runs a podcast. He's an AR guy. He's a manager, just and he's played with Ozzy and a whole bunch of other people. Welcome, Mr. Blasco. Hello, how's it going? Going great, dude. So mm-hmm. can you kind of maybe as a very first thing kind of tell anybody who's been living under a rock uh Mm -hmm. who you are what you do nutshell version of it sure um i there's a lot that i do uh there's not much that i don't do in the sort of music space of heavy metal um i i suppose that my career kind of started in the mid 80s in my first band called cryptic slaughter and, um, and, and I was a teenager and, uh, we were signed to metal blade records and I put out three records with cryptic slaughter, uh, on metal blade before I graduated high school. Um, so that's kind of where it all started. And then after high school, um, I went through sort of a, you know, myriad of different situations and bands, you know, as a musician, um, did the major label thing in the nineties. That was fun. And then kind of pivoted from there into being more of a hired gun guy. So yeah. as a hired gun bass player guy, I went from uh, prong into Danzig into Rob zombie into Ozzy Osbourne. And then, and then when I reached sort of the peak of the hired gun guy and getting the Ozzy Osbourne gig, that's whenever I started a management company that was 16 years ago at this point. Um, And, uh, and, and then I currently manage high on fire and clutch and Zach wild and black veil brides. And, um, and I do a bunch of other stuff. I do marketing and manage uh, like in consulting and um, you know, my business is kind of, sort of all over the place, but, and then, um, and then what else? Oh yeah. So I do a and mm-hmm. I have my own little situation at ripple music now where I've just signed, like, I don't know, a hundred bands and, um, we'll be releasing some records this year and more records next year. And, um, it's been, it's been fun. So it, the, the, you know, despite, uh, any COVID setbacks, I've been pretty busy and doing a lot of stuff. So I'm thankful for that. Cool. So first question I got. So now, how did you kind of have any extra time to do the Ripple thing? Because you seem like you're already working 24-7. So how did you fit this? Well, well first, maybe kind of say what it is. And then I want to know, how did you fit it in? Well, whenever I started the management company years ago, really sort of the first the, conceptually the idea behind starting my own business whenever I joined Ozzy's band was that I felt that I had sort of reached the pinnacle of what I could do as a musician. And I didn't, I didn't want to be a 50 year old guy during Ozzy's retirement and then have to figure out what I'm going to do as a musician to pay the bills, which fortunately I thought 16 years ahead, because that's exactly where we are. I'm 50 years old on Ozzy Osbourne's retirement tour. And yep. had I not put together a plan, I would be in, you know, a precarious situation <laughs> right now. Um, so, but the first thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to be an a and guy. That was really sort of what I wanted to do because I wanted to kind of be around more of the creative side and, yep. and make records and work with bands on their songs and the, the, the product of, of, a, of a release. And, and I, I really wanted to do that, but um, that opportunity wasn't there. Um, yep. And so that opportunity presented itself 16 years later in the form of <laughs> Todd, Todd and Ripple Music. So, um, so here I am. So it was a thing to where, how do I have time for it? Well, it's something that I feel like naturally like that I, I feel like naturally is something that is innate in me to want to know how to do. So, yeah. so it's, it's not like a learning curve, right? It's just, it, it's something to where I kind of snapped right into it, reached out to a bunch of bands, signed a bunch of bands, started working on records, having them send me demos, critiquing the demos. 
and then, you know, kind of building it out from there. So it's, it's kind of one of those things like the, the work smarter, not harder kind of idea. Just as an aside, your cat is adorable. Just staring at us. Like <laughs> I feel, yeah. I feel so judged right now, but <laughs> yes, I but have been okay. told that I, I have been told that my cats are very judgy. Um, they, this, they, this being one of them. Uh, but also but, very adorable, adorable in their judgment. <laughs> so Corey, why don't, why don't you start off with asking them some questions about management that you wanted to get into? Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I know that this is a lot of um, a, a question, a lot of like smaller bands get uh, or that they have, not that they get, that they have. Um, is when they should start looking for a manager, like what kind of a foundation should they have set up and should they wait for people to come to them or should they themselves identify who they want to work with and go after that person? Uh, ideally, it's in my experience, the situation happens organically when a band <laughs> needs a manager, managers appear. Um, <laughs> and, and, and so any band that I've ever managed that was on the ground level, right? Like mm -hmm. kind of just, just starting to build up those things got on my radar for mm -hmm. one reason or another, right? Like they, they didn't come to me and they'd be like, Hey, we're this, we're this band that's doing this. And like the, you know, uh, I think a lot of times bands are in a, in a hurry, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And I also think that bands, want to build out a team before they're ready and um, before it's necessary. But that moment is whenever th their, their business is at a point to where they can't handle it. Uh, mm -hmm. Like they can't hand, they can't handle all of it. Um, and, um, and you know, like, I, I feel like, the, like I said, like it, that, that moment just happens sort of organically. Um, and, um, and, you know, and a lot of times too, that they get a team member, like say a booking agent that, 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 that situation has happened to me before where a band that I manage had a booking agent first, that booking agent brought them to me and was like, Hey, these guys need a manager. And I checked it out and I go, yeah, this is totally, you know, I'm all, I'm all about it. This is, this is great. Um, but you know, conversely, there's a lot of experiences that I, I think it's, it's the, it's being uninformed a little bit and, mm -hmm. and no one's at fault because there's not any, any book out there, right? You can't really Google, Google get a straight answer from Google about yeah. how this, any of this works. But, um, you know, I feel like some bands think that a manager will bring something to the table that doesn't really exist, meaning a fan base. Like, yeah. so I, I, yes. I, I, I know bands that are like, oh, oh, dude, we need a manager to do this, this, and this. And I was like, but you don't have any fans. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't, if you don't have any fans, the managers don't put fans in your face. Like, that's just not how, it's not how it works. So, you know, I, I think the, the band's due diligence is to make the best music possible, put out the best content possible with the, mm -hmm. the, the, the specific intent of, building fans at the point that you can build fans, then you've got clout and currency and leverage. And th there's something to market to, right? There's someone to, to market and sell mm -hmm. your product to. And, and, and then, and only then is that really a value to anyone that only gets a percentage of your business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I kind of look at it, like I always kind of view it as like shark tank, right? Like to where it's mm -hmm. like, you've got this team of people that are sitting on the panel and the, the bands are, are the product that are trying to sell it to this team, this panel, this team, you know, this, this team. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's like, well, what have you got? You know, what, what do your sales look like? You know, anyone that's ever watched shark tank, it's the exact kind of situation. It's the same questions. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what's your following? Like what, what, you know, what, how many sales do you have? Like wh yeah. wh where is the business today? What's, What's your income look like? I mean, this is, it's, it, it is a business. Um, and that, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Oh, no, it, it answers my question and actually leads into my next question, which is sweet. Um, at the very beginning, when a band first, you know, hires a manager, what are some things they should expect at the very beginning? We, we know that like, eventually they should be bringing them bigger opportunities, but 
Um, should they expect their manager to have a well laid out plan, step like actionable steps that they're going to take and tell them like the how they're going to get them those opportunities or what should they really, really expect at the very beginning? Because obviously it's, you can't bring them fans, but what should they be bringing to the table? <laughs> well, it will, it will depend on what the band has to offer and, and where they are, right? Like, do they need a, do they need a record deal? Do mm -hmm. they need a, do they need a team built, you know, booking agent, lawyer, um, publicist, you know, there's, there's no, there's no, no one answer. Right. But I mean, I think, but to kind of answer your question, you know, a manager really is the person that brings opportunity to the artist. That's really what they do every day. Every day a manager wakes up and goes, what opportunities am I bringing to my clients today? That's, mm -hmm. that's the job, like in, in a nutshell. Um, I don't know that I subscribe to an idea of like a, a five year plan or, 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 or like some sort of PDF deck of this is how it's going to lay out because it's just, that's not reality. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have I, I, it, to be so rigid is I think unrealistic. It, you kind of have to be a little bit more flexible and willing to kind of roll with the punches and then know how to, how to pivot when necessary. Um, it kind of for like, for instance, now, right. Like in the, in the situation that we're in, you know, I know people that were innovative and I know people that just surrendered to, mm -hmm. to, to, to not knowing what to do and not know, you know, not knowing what was not knowing how to handle it because it's just something that we all inevitably kind of took for granted um, mm -hmm. that we were going to be able to tour and do shows forever, you know? So here we are, you know, a year's, a year's in, that's something, that's something that you could have put on a five-year plan. It's something that yeah. you could have predicted either, either you, you figured it out or, or you didn't. Um, Just a side, so. Blasco, do you think that there's going to be lots of tours coming back by the end of the year? I keep hearing all different things. What are you, what are your takes? I think so. I mean, cool. you know, I, I'm no one special and I'm getting a vaccine this weekend. So if I can, that means a lot of other people can. And if a lot of other people can, that seemingly is the path of to progress. Um, yeah. So I, I think that I would say that I hope so, but I don't want to go on record saying that it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely trying to remain optimistic in that respect too. It's uh, whether or not it'll happen. I'm definitely going to hope rather than resign myself to no, it's never going to happen again. So for sure. Yeah. Got to maintain that optimism or else you're going to lose motivation. Right. Yeah without a doubt and so, then um oh no go ahead curtis mm -hmm. well one thing i was going to ask too is okay so what did you kind of like i remember i thought it was like a year and a half two years ago we had i had you on my other podcast but now i remember it was right at the beginning of the pandemic you had mm -hmm. said the shows would be canceled for the year so what did you kind of have your bands doing in that time when they weren't being able to play shows to kind of like keep them productive and making an income well, we definitely became all merch companies. That's first and foremost. Um, some band, uh, some bands made records um, so that we could release them when things go back to normal. Yeah. Um, you know, we were able to, you know, take advances and, you know, sell off stuff and, you know, make records, do virtual shows. Um you know, there, there was a, a bunch of different things and it was kind of up to the individual, but a lot, a lot of people really kind of just made music on, mm -hmm. on some level. They use this as an opportunity to really kind of write and evaluate and, um, and, you know, a lot of that. So it was, you know, no one thing for everybody, but everybody stayed busy. That's for sure. Okay. And then now one thing I wanted to ask you about before I let Corey go back is now, a lot of labels will say that you need to focus on your socials in order to sign. So in your experience as a manager, do you think that that is an important thing to focus on or do you be on sales as your main thing or both? Uh, I mean, look, if you're, if you're, if you're a band, you're a business yep. and if you're a business looking to grow your business by way of bigger influence, right. And, and getting an investor, get building the team out, right. Like if you want people to invest in your business, 
It has to be investable. Um, yeah. and, and, and your currency as a band is fans. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I would think that focusing on socials is important because that's, uh, that's where your fans are and that's how you can market to them. Um, sure. y- you know, it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, fans in town, Spotify, mm-hmm. you, you know, all, all that is, uh, you know, really important because, that's the thing that a record label or a management company or a booking agent is going to, that's the first thing they're going to look at before they even listen to your music. And Mm -hmm. that maybe to a lot of people is frustrating, but it's the, it's a business, man. Like we, you know, like we're, we're, we're in a business. Um, And if, if, and that's just the way it works. And it's, it's a thing that you, you know, you say, and it's just true. And, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like it's, and so people that, don't want to focus on their, on their uh, socials and build fans and all that. That's fine. Right. I mean, that's, that's totally your prerogative, but you know, the reality is is like, if you want someone to invest in your business, you better be thinking of your band as a business. Mm -hmm. So just to follow that up too. So what about bands that may not have like a ton of followers? Like let's say they're hovering around the thousand mark or they're like 500 or whatever, but they're actively engaged. Does that give them a step up? Do you think? Only if it's converting, you know, I mean, okay. keep in mind too, that we're, that we're talking about, we're talking about the bigger, a bigger picture, right? Like on a smaller yeah. picture, if you think of me as an A&R guy at Ripple, like, like, look, like I'm not, I'm not so concerned about socials because to me that is more about the music right like i'm signing i'm signing bands because i like the music not because i like their amount of instagram followers you this know um, and 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 however though those situations these are bands that don't necessarily view themselves as the next big thing right yeah. like their their expectation isn't to get on the radio um, yeah. They they don't have management. They probably never will have management. Cryptic Slaughter didn't have a manager. Like you know what I mean? Like we had a we had a record deal. We put out records, but we didn't have a booking agent. We didn't have a we didn't have a manager. Like it it wasn't necessary. Um, Metal Blade put out our records because they liked our band, um, and it had nothing to do with Instagram or any of that stuff because it didn't exist then <laughs> you know yeah. so yeah. there was there was no visual of a fan base like either people bought our record or they didn't um yeah. and and stuff so you know i think it's it, it comes down to a matter of uh, of i think what what the band's expectations are and you have to, uh-huh. and, and, and the band's expectations should be in line with what it what they're willing to do yeah totally yeah, totally where i'll let you go next um, so I was going to ask on the, the other side of the equation, on the manager side of the equation, we talked about what like little bands should be looking for when they're looking for um, a manager, but what should smaller managers be thinking about or be doing to progress in their careers, things they should be learning, or any tips or pointers you have for people who are wanting to be managers, but are like the greenest of the green? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, first and foremost, you know, your network is your net worth. Um, mm-hmm. because like I said, if you go back to, okay, let's just, you know, build a hypothetical. You're, mm-hmm. you're a person that wants to, you want to manage bands. The good news is right now you can be, you can say you're a band manager because you don't need a degree from any college or any, yep. it, like, you, you know what I mean? Like you can <laughs> literally be a band manager right now. The only yep. thing that the only thing that's going to differentiate you is you're going to need a client. Yep. As soon as you have a client, then you're a manager. And as soon as you're a manager with a client, the first thing that you have to think of is what opportunity am I going to bring my client? And if if there's it's so you're going to need to look to your immediate network, and you're gonna you're going to want you know, and then you have to evaluate what steps are next do they need a record deal do they not need a record deal not every band needs a record deal right i mean there's plenty of bands that can make a record and put it on you know hire a digital distributor and get it on spotify and apple just like every other band you don't need you don't need a label to do that um do you want to do shows 
Are you able to tour? Do you need a booking agent or do you just start locally? Do you know local promoters to put them on shows that have national touring acts? Right. So how are you going to, how are you going to put this in front of people? What's, what is the social media strategy? How are you going to build their personality on social media? There's a, there's a, you know, there's a ton of things like that of like, what opportunities am I bringing this client with the agenda of how I'm going to build them up to, you know, to where they have a fan base to where they can at least play in front of a few people and sell a few records. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, that all, all makes perfect, perfect sense. So yeah. building out the network is definitely going to be the most important part for, for newbies, like, you know, like myself. <laughs> right. I, I, yeah. I would think that, I would think that, that I mean, you know, I mean, look, I, it's like if, if you just take me into consideration at the point that I started managing, I didn't have as big of a network as I have now. But yeah. because I had been signed to Metal Blade in the 80s and, and, and gone through that, like, you know, I didn't I didn't start managing until, you know, I don't know, two, 2000 something or other, 2005, 2006. Um, yeah, yeah. so I, I, I had a, a sort of wealth of contacts and of labels and booking agents and, you know, people that I had made friends with and I, I had built a network over time. Not everyone yeah. has that opportunity, but I, I, I feel like you get, you have to have some type of network because how else are you going to provide opportunities? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That all, all makes sense. Um, and then, so flipping back to the other side of with what bands should be looking for, um, both Curtis and I, from pretty much every musician that we've spoken to so far, they've all had some sort of story about somebody who calls themselves a, themselves a band manager, but really they're just a scammer. Um, so what are some red flags that bands should be looking out for right away that are just like very apparent, this is a red flag and they should distance themselves from this person? Uh, I've run across those occasionally, and it seems to me that the most obvious red flag is that someone charging a band for services. Um, that, you know, it, to me, if you're a band and you're going to pay for management services, you're not a band that is in the market for a manager yet because no real manager charges for charges for services like on a, on a retainer basis. Um, if, if you want to hire a publicist for publicity services, that's a completely different business model. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know um, so, but it's different, right? Because Curtis as a publicist, I'm hiring you for a specific purpose. I need you to write a press release and yep. send it to your contact so that it gets out into the, onto the blogosphere. Right. That's a, that's a service that you're providing that you can provide an actual price tag for. Right. Mm -hmm. Something that something like man management is a, is a, is a different type of service industry to where it's like, it's a, a little bit more nebulous in terms of how we accomplish goals. Yeah. Um, you know, put me, you know, so I think that the, the, the scammer red flag is always the, the price tag associated with it. And then also too, like who their clients are. You know, I mean, like I always, I always feel like when you see those, they're always just kind of dog shit bands <laughs> that no one's ever heard of. And like, it's just kind of like, well, that that's, that's the level that you're going to be at then. Right. <laughs> you, you, you know, if there's no, if there's well, no, if there's no breakout, right. If there's no success story here, then, well, then what is it? What kind of, <laughs> what kind of management company is this? You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a, a lower tier management company that manages a bunch of lower tier artists. There's nothing, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that because at some point we all started there, right? Like all the, 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 you know, whenever I managed in this moment, they were like one of the first bands I managed. They were a low tier band at first before they got a record deal and put out records and got on the radio and got big. And now they're, now they're a big band. Right. So yeah. at, at that, at the point that I started managing the, the bands that I managed were small bands, you, yeah. you know? So, so, I, I get it. But then again, I wasn't trying to scam anybody either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, it was like, it was a, a it was a legit service. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you just got to be cautious. I, I, I feel like and the internet is your friend. 
too, right? Oh, to yeah. where it's like you can always just Google stuff and people are very more, much willing to talk about how they got scammed or that this particular service is a scam and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to jump in with a question because uh, one thing about you, Blasco, is that you're constantly, or at least you seem like you're constantly reaching out to new bands and providing a help to them whenever you can like you don't always charge for your services like you do a lot of free shit like you put people on a playlist you promote bands on social media a lot of the time i always see you doing something like a lot of free work so how do you kind of pick who you're going to help at no to low cost versus guys that you're you know you're like i want to go into a a bigger relationship with you, you if if that makes sense Look, I mean, I, I'm fortunate that heavy metal pays my bills. And, and, yeah. and every day that that happens, that's a glorious day, right? Because in 1986, whenever this thing was just kind of the seed was there, right? Like 1986 was an important year. That was Master of Puppets and Rain and Blood. Yeah. Um, and, and, that, and at that point right? Like in the early eighties, like no one did heavy metal as a career choice. We did it for the love of, of the music, right? Mm -hmm. Like Brian, Brian Slagle didn't start metal blade records as a career choice. Like Slayer and Metallica didn't start those bands as a career choice. Like, you know, like I wasn't in cryptic slaughter as a career choice. Like that. So I feel like because because they those situations then became careers and Metallica is one of the biggest bands in the entire world like we have to like I feel like I have a personal responsibility to put a spotlight on people that want that ask their parents for a Les Paul and a Marshall stack for Christmas mm-hmm. right like as opposed to wanting to be a YouTuber or a SoundCloud rapper like mm-hmm. th- 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 there's something special about someone young that wants to get in the garage with their friends and crank out riffs like Mm -hmm. it's my responsibility to let people know that those people exist right Mm -hmm. otherwise otherwise what's going to happen how are we going to have another opportunity for rock to be on the forefront you know i'm not saying i'm not trying to be gene simmons and saying that rock is dead i I definitely am not i don't subscribe to that and i i don't believe that's true um Mm -hmm. but 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 i believe that every day that I've been given the gift of music and heavy metal. And, and that's, that's a career choice whenever it wasn't, whenever I got into it. Um, I, I feel like it's my responsibility just to let everyone know that these bands exist and to give them the opportunities that I had. That's or at least awesome. try. That well, is, I mean, and I may sound like a, a, a sap here, but that is probably like the most heartwarming thing I've ever heard. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. I Curtis knows I'm a giant, like, baby sometimes so um but yeah that is absolutely amazing to hear and yeah i love it so we got about minutes left for the call so a couple things i i just wanted to quickly ask you uh blasco was can you kind of go over what you look for as an a and r guy versus a manager because i know you're going like you said you're going on a signing spree so i'm just kind of curious what do you actually look for that's a good question because those are two very different perspectives. Yeah. Um, whereas mm-hmm. on the management side, that's that's definitely primarily a business focused. Yeah. However, like, yeah. dude, I, I, I'm once again like, if if just going back to being very lucky and very fortunate, right? Like, as yeah. a hired as a hired gun, I played in Prong, Danzig, Rob Zombie, and Ozzy Osbourne. Like, that is. Be a beyond fortunate amount of luck to have played those those songs with those dudes right like that's that's because i know plenty of hired gun guys and we don't always have the opportunity to play fucking war pigs with the man you know yeah. like you just don't yeah. like you, you find yourselves in these positions to pay the bills and play some music that sucks um yeah. and, and, and so i'm very fortunate on a management side man i'm, I'm very fortunate to to work with Clutch and High on Fire and Zach Wild and Black Veil Bride. These are all bands that, you know, I, I dig. And um, once again, you know, you don't have, always have the opportunity to, to manage bands that you love and that, yes. you know, that you, like that you listen to, like normally, you know, mm-hmm. like it's just, it, so I, I think I've been, I've been fortunate in that way. But so I'm not trying to, 
you know, marginalize the business side of it. But, you know, management is a percentage based business and you only make money when you make money for the for the bands. Right. So it, yeah. it, 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 so what I look for from a management perspective is, you know, based on business. So that's different. Whereas as an A&R person signing bands to, to Ripple, like I look for music that I like. I, I think I, I like this is the thing, right? Like, do you realize that the greatest time in your life, like you don't realize the greatest time in your life until you're until it's in the past. Right. Yep. Like, you know, like, God, man, like that one year was the greatest summer of my <laughs> entire life. But you didn't know it at, at that at, at that time. You know, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and and so so with Ripple, the way that I look at it is like a very fortunate opportunity to be able to re to relive a very great moment in my life, which was in the mid 80s, whenever I had no responsibility other than skateboarding and playing speed metal in in Scott's garage. Right. That, that Those were the greatest like three years of my life because I didn't have to have a job. I was in high school. I lived at my parents' house. I didn't have to worry about paying the bills. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was, it was a, it was, it was the best. It was the greatest. And so I look at my opportunity at Ripple as kind of sort of the same thing of like, man, if, if you have the opportunity to go back to the greatest moment of your life, what would you do differently? You know? Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. I look at it and, and I look at it and I go, man, I, I, I want to sign bands that I just think are cool, that I think have a cool band name. They have got a cool band logo. I can, I can make them have cool looking vinyl, right? Like, mm. like I can, I can make their records from start to like beginning to end super awesome. Every song bangers. Right. And, and just to be able to kind of go back in time and sort of relive those, you know, glory moments of the, the mid eighties of metal and, and, you know, who knows, man, maybe I create, you know, another, another round of, of that, you know, to where mm. it's like, it's, it's all these great bands making great, albums because you know it's like you know unfortunately there isn't a lot of mentors involved in this particular scene right there's a, there's a bunch of great people and there's yeah. a bunch of great labels and blogs and you know publicists and booking agents and and uh and, and whatnot that that are all involved but there isn't someone like me necessarily like i'm not trying to pat myself on the back i'm just kind of pointing out that there isn't there isn't a lot of opportunity for people like me to insert yourself into the conversation uh, of, of, you know, signing bands and finding new bands and developing them. Right. Like that, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, you know, situations don't have someone with my experience to come in with the enthusiasm of wanting to do what I do. Um, so, so uh, there, there's really, there's, there's nothing specific about it, but I can tell you that, from an A&R perspective, it's like, I, I, it's strictly the music and, and the aesthetic, right. And the branding, that's yeah. what I'm attracted to. Like, I, I honestly, I rarely even look at these bands like Instagram followers and, or, or Spotify plays. Like I really don't even care. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, um, and so like that, that, that's, that's, I think that's the, the, the difference of the two of, of, of balancing business and music. From a, biz, awesome. from, from a business perspective. That's awesome. Okay, so we got to wrap up, but I, I really appreciate the enthusiasm you actually have because every time you reach out to a new band or you comment about them, they get super excited. They're like, wow, this guy from Ozzy Osbourne is actually, you know, <laughs> interested. even if it's just you're saying, check out this single or whatever, right? I don't sure. know if you, how far that actually goes with a lot of these. Bands. Like, oh, this is amazing, right? So mm -hmm. I, Hey, thank you for doing that because like especially when like i mean i mainly work with underground bands so i'm hearing it so whenever you share anything it's like like the moment for that band so i just wanted to say thank you for that of course yes and course. thank you for being here today with us <laughs> no problem thanks for having me i appreciate it awesome party on Corey. party on curtis <laughs>